Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions, and this is the review of the Inakim Lite 2 and the Speedway Mini 4 Pro 36 electric scooters. Let's go over some of the basic specs of the scooters just before we get into the guts of the review. The Inakim has a 6 hour charge time, whereas the charge time of the Speedway is 4 to 6 hours. The weight of the Inakim is 13.7 kilograms, whereas the Speedway is 12.5 kilograms. The max load of the Inakim is 80 kilograms, and the max load of the Speedway is 120 kilograms. The maximum range you're going to get out of the Inakim is 40 kilometers whereas the range of the Speedway is 30 kilometers. They both feature a 36 volt battery. However, the max speed of the Inakim is 35 kilometers an hour, whereas the max speed of the Speedway is 30 kilometers an hour. Please note that this is factory set to 25 kilometers an hour for safety. They also both feature a 350 watt motor. So how do they stack up in terms of the design? Starting off with build quality, whilst reviewing these two scooters I couldn't find anything that stood out to me that made me think that they weren't well made and well considered in the design process by the manufacturers. I don't have any negatives to say about the overall design aspect, however there are a few differences in terms of functionality, which we'll get onto very shortly. The folding mechanism on each of these is actually quite different. In my opinion, the Inakim's folding mechanism is vastly superior to the Speedway's folding mechanism purely because, on the Inakim's one, it folds out and back in again and snaps directly into place and feels like an overall polished and well-designed mechanical component in comparison to the Speedway's. Say if you want to unfold and start to use the Speedway scooter, I did find that you have to apply a little bit more force in order to fully open the scooter so it clicked into place. This involved holding the brakes and just pushing forward with both hands just a little further before it would click into place. This wasn't the case on the Inakim which is why I would probably suggest if you're looking for the best folding mechanism out of the two, Inakim is the way to go. It's important to note that this could have just been the review unit I had, it could be different in your experience and to be honest with a bit of oil and maybe some allen keys you could probably fix this pretty easy. Speaking of fold out components though, to fold out the handlebars on the Inakim isn't as easy or as smooth as it is on the Speedways. On the Speedways you just pull the two levers outwards and the handlebars fold out. You release these and it's in place. On the Inakim's one you actually have to screw the rings into place to make the handlebars secure. It feels like the Speedways are the way to go. Let's talk about the quote unquote cool factor. Basically how does it look? Does it look stylish and things like that? To be honest in terms of a cool factor it's all about perspective here because on the one hand you've got the Inakim which is a sleek and very stylish and low profile looking scooter with more striking colours that are available. However it doesn't really have that grunty or aggressive look that some people might be looking for which the Speedway certainly does have. The Speedway versus the Inakim if you're putting them side by side, the Speedway looks like the more powerful, beefy scooter that can handle more, whereas the Inakim looks more like your slimline, low profile scooter that's meant for city scooting in comparison to going over little bits of grass, going down rougher pavements, which from the looks of things, again, this is purely just looks, the Speedway looks to be more appropriate. Inakim, low profile and sleek. Speedway looks like the beast, however looks can be deceiving. Let's look at the throttles that both of these scooters have decided to go for. You'll be used to the style of throttle that the Inakim has gone for, 
because it's very similar to the lime scooters or birds or uber skewers, whatever they're called, where you basically push down on a tab to go forward. This is the same principle on the Inokim Lite 2. However, you can actually turn the whole throttle itself, almost like a motorbike action, to go forward. I didn't really use this a whole lot in terms of the motorbike turning grip. I did push down on the tab to go forward. That was good. That's familiar. However, the twisting throttle action feels a bit unnatural because a twisting action while you're leaning on the handlebars doesn't really feel natural. But the tab or the normal lever throttle, like on the other scooters that you're probably familiar with, is very, very familiar and easy to use. On the Speedway, however, it's a trigger. The trigger is attached to the interface, which we'll get onto shortly, but you're holding the two handlebars, and then with your index finger on your right hand, this is what you'll be moving the trigger with. You can use other fingers on your right hand, but for ease of use, I found it's best to use your index finger, go along, you pull the trigger with that to go forward. It works well. It takes a little bit of getting used to because it's quite a, um, it's a unique addition in comparison to other scooters I've used in the past. They tend to be more of the pushing down the lever like I just mentioned, but the trigger works fine too. Again, I'm going to say it a few times in this review, it's going to come down to your personal preference, which one you like. I, however, I quite like the Speedway's trigger instead of the traditional one because it's a bit out there and you get used to it very, very quickly. When it comes to lights, the Speedway 4 just takes the cake. It's basically a light show at this point. There's multiple lights on the front and back in comparison to Inokim where they've gone for a single light front and back. It's no real deal breaker though, to be completely honest, because at the end of the day, I've tested this at night and they both produce a decent amount of light to keep you safe when you're trying to get those last minute journeys in when the sun goes down. So there's no safety compromise when it comes to the lights. It's just that the Speedway definitely has more lights available. They've just scattered it all over the back and all over the front, whereas the Inokim has one at the front and one at the back. Same result, different design. I personally prefer the Inokim's one at the front, one at the back style lighting, just because the less components you can have on a scooter, the less weight there is, and also the better it looks because it's more of like a minimalist design and streamlined. Okay, so let's compare the dashboard functionality of these two scooters. That's the little interface that you can control, see the speed, see the total trip, etc, etc. Starting off with the Speedway. The Speedway system has an ability to show you the speed, the unit of speed, the battery meter, the current ride time, as well as the ability to cycle through three speed modes. The first speed mode is a slow speed, the second one is medium, and the last one is max speed, so one, two, and three. The reason why they've chosen to get a varied speed mode ability in here is because it also helps with the safety. So you could put this on speed mode one and give it to somebody who's less confident riding scooters, and then gradually they can press the button to increase the mode, which will increase the speed ability of the scooter. So it's a way to gradually introduce somebody to the scooter experience. You can also cycle between various modes by pressing the mode button and the modes that it gives you access to. The first one is trip, which is the current trip mileage. You would then long press the mode button again if you wanted to reset this for every trip that you did. The OD01 is for total mileage that the scooter has done in its lifetime, and VOL is the current voltage that the scooter is using. The overall display of the Speedway is quite large and bright, and the way it's placed on the scooter's handlebars is very clear and directly in your line of sight. I really do prefer this over the Inokim's one. Because the Inokim Lite 2 features a screen that's about the size of a watch face, whereas the Speedway display is a larger size diameter display, which is easier to see. Going over to the Inokim Lite 2 now, which also gives you the ability to change the brightness and various things like that, there are also several features involved in this too. And these are as follows. We've got the travel speed, the distance, the battery status, the speed mode, the total trip, 
background light, automatic power off, and an odometer. You've also got a plus button and a minus button to go up and down the speeds, as well as the power button to turn it on and off. Obviously, both throttle displays have a power button. However, the one on the inner Kim doesn't have a mode button. Very similar functions in terms of total speed, total distance, battery status, speed modes, and things like that. But the display on the Speedway is way bigger, and in my opinion, way better. Just because it's good to just see the speed and have it in your peripheral vision, easy to see and lit up in comparison to the Inakims. That being said, I do quite like that the size of the Inakims display is like a watch face and doesn't, if you don't want to see it, immediately just show you all the time the speed and the, the current status and you can choose to look down and see that if you like. Both displays are fine, the Speedways is better. If you want to put them in your car, take them out of the other end and ride away, what's the compactness like of the scooters? What I'll tell you. Personally, I found it easier to fold down the speedway because of the pulling of the levers for the handlebars to collapse them, kicking the switch at the bottom corner of the scooter, collapsing them down and putting it in the car. That was cool. In comparison, the inner Kim's handlebars, you have to actually screw those rings out and then you pull them to the side and then you can collapse the handlebars and then the whole frame. There's not much in it, to be honest. The weight isn't really that much of a factor and I really don't think there is much of a difference between the compactness. Just bear in mind that the ride height of the Speedway is higher off the ground in comparison to the inner Kim, which I'll get onto later, which may take up some more space in your car. Overall, you're not going to really notice any difference in terms of compactness. So how do these scooters ride and what's the riding experience like? First of all, from the get-go with the inner Kim Lite 2, you do need to push off and then get a bit of momentum up before the motor will actually kick in and allow you to increase the speed. Whereas on the speedway, you literally just have to press down the throttle and the machine will go. Just bear that in mind and don't get too carried away when trying to accelerate on either of these. The Inakim does actually feel quite nippy in terms of acceleration and just maneuverability in comparison to the Speedway. However, because there's a maximum weight limit on both of these and the Inakim can handle slightly less weight than the Speedway can, you may find that people who are of the heavier persuasion, to put it politely, might have a different riding experience to those that are lighter. I did find the inner Kim to be a little bit louder than the Speedway. It just makes this like high pitch kind of whirring noise. Didn't really find that too much from the Speedway. I did find that the Speedway is able to handle rougher terrain and bumpy pavements a lot better than the inner Kim. This is in part due to the increased ride height between the Speedway and the inner Kim. What I mean by this is if you're riding the inner Kim Lite 2 on a bumpy road or a pavement, the chances are you might get a scratch here and there. If you're riding the light two on the pavement, lots of bumps, and you go off a little curb on there, you might scratch the bottom of it because it is quite low to the ground. In massive contrast to this, the speedway is quite far off the ground, which means you can basically go off curbs, go onto grass and slightly other rougher terrains, and it won't even be a problem. This is a major, major bonus for the Speedway scooter. I did find that the Speedway was slightly slower in terms of acceleration. However, this is kind of understandable considering the form factor of it and that it also makes a compromise between, okay, let's bring the acceleration down so that we can get suspension, higher ride height, and just a better experience. So I guess it depends if you want to go for a more whizzy and nippier ride that can accelerate faster or one that can handle the environments that you might put it in a little bit better. When I'm going up hills, the inner Kim managed to get slightly further with the same run up. However, this is again dependent on the weight because you'll likely find that the more weight you put on the scooter, the more it suffers and slows down. So it's hard to kind of keep reiterating this, but these scooters are very similar in terms of performance. However, they have different uses. I would be going more towards the light too if you want the city riding and you're not going to be going over as many bumpy roads or you won't be going off curbs and things like that or over like the odd patch of grass here and there. 
I would be going for the light two all day. However, if you might come across some slightly bumpy roads, some tricky to deal with terrain, and would prefer better handling and a more comfortable ride in these sort of scenarios, then I would be looking more towards the Speedway scooter. Obviously, in terms of ride comfort, the suspension on the Speedway, in comparison to no suspension on the Inokim, is a pretty big difference. So bear that in mind. As safety is the top priority for scooter manufacturers, I'm going to go through the difference between the two brakes, which ones I prefer, and all of that jazz. So, starting off with the Inokim. This has two brake levers on the front, so you can always keep your hands on the brakes, just in case you want to make that emergency stop. This is a front and back brake. However, the Speedway Mini only has a singular brake. This does not mean it's any less safe. It just maybe has that subconscious thought that you might have of, oh, actually, I'll prefer to have two brakes so I can stop easier. I don't think that's strictly true. I think the Speedway and the Inokim have parallel levels of safety in terms of braking. It's just that the Inokim has two brakes instead of the Speedway's singular one. Personally, I prefer the two brakes. It handles very easy and it feels natural just to rest your fingers on top of the brakes just in case, in comparison to just having a left brake, which is what you have on the Speedway. That being said, the hand grips on the Speedway are more ergonomically designed, which means your hands rest easier on them and it actually feels like more of a secure ride. There's that annoying choice again, it's down to personal preference. I like the Speedway because you can put your hands on the handlebars. It feels more natural just because of the ergonomic design. However, it's only got one brake. The Inokim has two brakes, which is great. However, the handlebar comfort and the design isn't as good as the Speedways. It's quite important to mention that these two scooters both have drum brakes. However, the Inokim has a front and back enclosed brake system, whereas the Speedway has an exposed braking system, which makes it more susceptible to slow weather deterioration and things like that, just because it's exposed to the elements. The Speedway 4 has a rear drum brake, which explains why there is only a singular brake. I tried braking hard on both scooters, and to be honest, you do feel like you have more control with the Inokim because there are two. However, capability-wise, there is not much, if anything, between the two in terms of braking. Thank you very much for watching this review and I hope I've given you some sort of insight as to my experiences with these two scooters. There are pros and cons to both. If I was going to pick one of these two devices, personally, I would probably go for the Inokim Lite 2. The only reason why I probably wouldn't go for the Inokim Lite 2 over the Speedway would be the ride height. For some people, the ride height being that low to the ground might be a game changer. Let me know what your thoughts are on these two scooters. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Adam from Ads Productions. If you've got any questions on either of these two scooters, please leave them as a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching.